Evening everybody. Still really surreal because I can see who's watching on, on the mirror in my mobile phone. I can't actually see it on the screen here, but I know there's uh, a few people who tuned in already. So I hope you've all got a drink ready. Evening, Brian. Okay, it's definitely another red wine night tonight. It's a bit chilly outside. Anyone been out um, fishing recently? Anybody? Anybody been anywhere? Oh, hi, Rob. Um, just let you know, Rob, um, your um, Christmas decorations went out in the post, so you should be get them any time, within it and possibly even tomorrow. So I hope, uh, hope, hope you like them. Um, uh, let me know. Uh, oh, Brian's got a cup of tea. Hardcore. Um, not able to get out now. No, nor me. I've, up until this week, I've, I've had to be self-isolating. So, because uh, I came into contact with somebody with uh, who had... Um, he was tested positive for COVID and as a school teacher, I wasn't allowed to go back into work at all, even though I was negatively tested. So um, I've been setting work from home and teaching kids and, and went stir crazy. Absolutely mental. Uh, evening, George. Ash has got a scotch in hand and a hook in the vice. Great. That's what I like to see. Any particular uh, scotch, Ash, that you, you, you prefer? Uh, Rob's off to me on springs, that's cool. It's fishing well, from what I've heard, Rob. Nice temperatures as well. Good evening, Kieran. We'll give it a couple more minutes, or a minute or so, for other people to, to log on. And uh, then we'll get started. <laughs> Right then, folks. Okay, so let's make the. I'm going to make the best use of the sort of the hour and a bit that um, that I've got, um, and uh, and and tie up um, some patterns. I hope you like and you give them a go. Um, one thing before I start um, this evening is that um, unfortunately you probably saw on the on the Facebook page that um, one of our very active members, Scott, um, passed away this week um, unexpectedly. Um, so I'd like to dedicate tonight to. For, for what it's worth to Scott um, and uh, and hope that um, he's um, in a better place and that ultimately, you know, my these flies spiritually might reach him so he can use them on those on those wonderful waters up by the pearly gates. Um, so, um, you know, rest in peace, Scott. Um, and this is for you, mate. Um, so um, I can't believe it's week five of our sort of tie-in sessions um when i first started this it was sort of like oh let's see how it goes um but all of a sudden it's come off and uh and people seem to quite enjoy it um so we've been through quite a few different patterns and i hope that you've you've uh, appreciated the tying videos i'm trying to trying to get up as quickly as i can and the step by steps for all the patterns um they can be found in the um uh in the tabs at the top of the uh of the page um, but also on my, um, uh, my my YouTube channel as well and also on my website. Um, tonight I'm going to start off with some clink hammers. Um, and because uh, quite a few people said that they, they, they'd like to see them being tied. And, uh, and what I will say before I start is that um, there are loads of ways of tying a clink hammer. 
um, and this is just my version um, and, I, and I like it because it's quick and I also like it because it catches lots of fish as well um, even on rivers still waters you know um, it's a fantastic pattern it really is for me along with the copper john the peeping caddis the clink hammer um, LK caddis they're game changer flies and you can't really do without them in your fly box um, so I'm starting off um, this evening um, with one of many clink hammer hooks that are on the market and I, I've got to be honest I've been through most of them um, and some of them I like and some I haven't really got on with but my my current favorite um, is is a Fasner actually um, it's the F120 um, in lots of different sizes and um, I particularly like this because um, of, of this section here it's got this really nice long top shank here just in this section here it gives you lots to play with and and if you look at where the hook point is here you look at that proportion you've got a good eight or nine millimeters of space there to play with um, and then you get this beautiful um, curve here and what i like about this particularly um particularly for the hook set is that it's got this curve up it's almost it's not circle hook as such but it's got a circle hook qualities so that um so that when you actually strike into the fish once it's taken it um you know the chances of losing that fish um reduce quite dramatically um some of the other clean camera hooks that i've tried um they just i haven't found them as successful okay um so um i'm going to start off um, with some tie and silk so um no real preference except that as you, most of you probably know, I do stock lots of Semperfly stuff on the website. Um, so I've got some Semperfly um, spider thread here. Uh, no, actually, it's just waxed uh, Semperfly thread, 12 volt. Um, and for this clean hammer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some extra little wax to it as well. So I want it all to bind. And this is dead simple, this clean hammer. Um, so I'm going to start off just right up to the eye. Oh, let's hope that gets into back into focus. There we go. I'm going to start off right behind the eye right by here and I'm going to bring my tying thread down along that straight section until it's level with my hook point okay so it's level with my hook point um, that's as far as I need to go at this point and then I'm just going to nip off my waist thread and then I'm going to take it back cut halfway along that horizontal segment there so halfway just in that point so this is i'm going to put my post in now um just make sure i can get that back in focus um, i'm going to put my post in now now there's loads of things you can use for posts i had this conversation with somebody on the forum um the other day you can use deer hair you can use calf tail you can use um uh um Antron, you can use um, uh, stuff I've got here, which is uh, very simply um, some um, uh, polyon, simplified polyon. Um, I've got this in chartreuse. Today I'm going to use it in in a bright yellow, um, and I find different colours for the posts for different light levels. Um, when I'm fishing on the river, um, particularly late in the evening in the summer, uh, bright pink post. For some reason, I can pick that up better than most of the others. But for this one, I'm going to use. I'm going to use um, some yellow. Um, the poly yarn itself is very thick. I don't need all of that. So what I've done is I've cut off a piece already and I've halved it. I've halved the segment so um, I can get loads more flies out of it. So you definitely get um, get uh, bang for your buck here. So to attach my post in, I'm literally, I, I want my clink hammers to be no nonsense i want them to be um to be as small and as light as possible so i'm going to reduce as much bulk as i can so instead of bringing it under and tying it in here which puts lots of bulk underneath the bottom of the hook um what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it up and sit it on the top like that and then i'm going to lock it in with a couple of turns like that Okay, so that's, this is going to form our post. So this is where you need to get a bit dexterous with, 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 with two hands. And I'm going to take a couple of turns either side just to give it a little bit of support and to cock it right up. There we go. And then I'm going to take my tie-in thread 
and I'm going to very carefully wrap it around without putting lots of tension on it so I'm building up a post and you'll notice that I'm just giving it a pull but I'm also pulling back up on my post material just to keep it in place and I'm going to take it up now you can take it up as high as you personally like. Don't forget you've got to fit a thorax in here plus a hackle. So I'm going to take it up quite far. Probably about 5 mils, Maybe a little bit more. Give it a bit of a pull. And there we have it. So I've started to develop my post. And then I'm going to work my way all the way back down. And I'm not pulling it too hard because it will just pull everything off the hook until I get back to the beginning again. So we've got our um, our post in place and then I'm just going to build up around the side and give it a bit more security. And that's not going to go anywhere. OK, so that's in. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. OK, so um, so. At this point, I'm not going to use anything for a body um, clink hammers I like them to sit below the surface so so the from the from this section here just sitting below the surface because it you know, is an emerger pattern um, and I want a minimum thorax here of a material that's hopefully going to float um, and there are lots of materials that people use I'm thinking hmm, they're not not the best floating materials um, they actually absorb lots of water um, and then I've got my hackle, which is going to be around by here. So literally, this is this has just got a thread body, a thread rib, um, a bit of dubbing and a hackle. And it's a really successful fly. Um, and I tie these down to a size 18 occasionally if it's needed into a size 20. But I try not to go down that that far. Now, I'm going to take my tying thread down the hook. and I'm going to try and keep them in touching turns now to do that i'm coming down and i'm just pulling slightly back uh, at the at the back of the uh the wrap and they're just butting up against each other and the good thing about this semperfly wax thread is that it does flatten out you don't get a rounded um wrap you get a flat wrap which makes for a really really nice body now, at this point, you could put a body material in. Um, I'm choosing not to today. I'm going to bring it down. One more. There we go. And in we come. OK, so we're into that point. Now, if you wanted to, you could work your way all the way back up again. Um, again, I'm not going to do that today. Um, I, I just want it to be as slim as possible. And I'm, I'm going to put um, a rib in and I'm going to use the, the tying thread as a rib. Now, to do that, it's dead simple. I'm going to use a trusty Sharpie marker. It's going to go for a black rib here just for some segmentation. And I'm just going to give it a bit of colour either side. Make sure I don't go too close to the actual fly body because I don't want to get any black on that at the moment. So I've got that nice and black. Put that to one side. And then I'm going to take a turn at the bottom. Now one full turn of black. And then I'm going to segment my body using my tying thread. And hopefully you can see that as I'm working my way up. We get to that point there. So hopefully you can now see that we've got, I'm conscious that it's going in and out of focus a little bit. Um, we can see that we've got our thread body and a thread rib. Don't worry if you haven't made total um, uh, total connecting wraps all the way around. Nobody cares. The fish don't care. In fact, actually it gives a little bit of sparkle occasionally. And we get to this point and I'm just going to take it round to the front, round the back, just adding some more security to my post. And we're in play. And I'm going to take take it back. Just build it up a little bit either side with these cross wraps. 
And there we have it. Okay. Um, so post is in. We've got our body. We've got our um, a nice little rib just for that segmentation. Um, and now what we need is a hackle. Now, for this one, I'm going to use um, a grizzle hackle. Who doesn't like a nice grizzle hackle? Um, I'm going to use um, a whiting hackle. Um, this is off a, uh, a whiting saddle. Um, the one piece of advice I can ever give for dry flies is buy the, buy the best um, uh, um, hackles you, you can. Um, you know, I, I tried them with cheap um, uh, um, Indian cock and things like that. And it just doesn't sit right. They become very waterlogged very quickly. Um, these are absolutely stunning. They're all uniform. Um, lucky I got these from Funky Fly Tying and the guys at Funky sent me down some capes and said look send us back the ones you don't want and I was able to have a look at them that was absolutely fantastic okay so the best genetic hackles are absolutely a top priority um, for dry flies so I'm going to select a, a hackle now the great thing about these is that they're so long I can probably get about 10 flies out of each one um, so you're actually you're actually um, saving yourself a bit of money. I've just used a hackle gauge just to check the, the, the length of it. And that's perfect. Yep, absolutely perfect in size. So you can see, if I just hold it just in here, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the beautiful barring on this and it's uniform in length all the way. If you've ever wondered in those photos that you see where people have got these very beautiful um, parachute hackles it is purely down to the quality of the feathers that they're actually using so uh, helps if I can find my scissors so for this one I'm just going to nip off the bottom of that hackle seems like a waste but it's not so um, so we've got to we've got this bit here and then I'm going to prepare the bottom of it By just pulling, oh, I don't know if you can see that. By pulling the hackles, I'm conscious that my zip is making it go out of focus. Hang on, wardrobe malfunction. One oh one. There we go. All right, so hopefully that'll stay in focus now. Um, so I set it up like this. Now, what I'm, I'm not going to strip those off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a straight pair of scissors. Um, here um, and I'm literally going to just trim them back to the back to the um, to the shaft of the feather it's easier to do this when you're not on camera so I'm just going to trim there and trim there until I get a comb effect now that helps um, as we're tying it in um, it stops it from slipping because it acts um, it acts like teeth to hold it in place Okay, so what I what I'm going to do is going to make sure the natural curve of the feather. So there's the natural curve of the feather. When I'm tying it in, I want that facing me. So it's going to be facing me, and I actually need to make that section a little bit longer. And I'll show you the reason why in a second. So I'll just make this a bit longer. There we go. So it's about eight, nine millimeters long now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in. And I, this is where I've got to judge because I'm going to bring it up into the post. So I'm going to tie in first one side, then on the other, just to trap it in. And then I'm going to bring my hackle up. Now this again, you've got to be pretty dexterous for this. If you've got a gallows tool, hold it in the gallows tool. I do have one, just never use it. So um, I'm just going to bring it across, first of all, like that. And then I'm going to bring my tie-in thread up the post, trapping in the shaft of the genetic hackle until I get to the top. And then I'm going to work my way all the way back down again. And what I've done there is using using the um, the central core of the feather itself, I've used that to strengthen my posting. 
as well. So we've got that's go that's not going to really going to go anywhere at this point. And then I'm going to take my tie thread. I'm just going to tie down all of the the hackle. Just constantly keeping it just out of the way, flicking it up, bringing it back round, just building it up a bit. So we've got it at this point. Okay. So it does keep going out. out of focus. There we go. Got it back in focus. Let's get a bit closer. Sorry. Get a bit closer. So we're in play here. So there's my hackle just in there with my post out of the way. Um, now for the thorax. Okay. So I'm going to use um, a bit of dubbing. I do have my favourites as you probably guessed over the last few weeks. So one of my favorites um, is uh, Andrew Scruffy Dubbing. Ooh, that, put it there, Andrew Scruffy Dubbing, um, Trout Stalker. This one is Appleby Olive. I've used this one before. Um, I just love the way that this stuff just dubs onto, um, onto any thread, waxed or unwaxed. Um, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make a little dubbing noodle. You don't want it too tight. Bring it up and at this point I'm now going to carefully cover the front section thorax area like that and keep adding little bits so I can get some full coverage on it now it's important at this point to add little and often rather than a massive amount and I'm going to bring it around so you probably see on your side that there's a gap so um, actually I'm going to bring it around there and I'm going to sort of figure of eight it to fill in any any gap there is and what I what you'll notice I'm hoping you you notice this is that underneath at the bottom here is not a massive amount of bulk here most of the bulk is at the top we're going we're gonna to pull some of this out to act as legs, but most of it is at the top here. And that's exactly what we want at this point. I'm going to add a little bit more in, just so that I can stop the thread in the right position. Just move it up a bit. And I'm going to bring it round once, twice. And on the final turn, I'm going to bring it round the post and finish on my side okay so round the post round the post and I'm going to finish on my side here um, instead of the side towards you guys now I'm going to take this as an my hook so I'm now going to turn it so that it's facing down now you can see why now you'll be able to see why that ultimately the thread was on my side because now it's facing your side. So this is the point at which we're going to put a tie in or put our hackle in. So here it is. Here's my hackle. Um, I want to get as many turns as I can without over um, bulking the top of the fly and making it look a bit silly. So um, we're going to start off with one turn just at the top. You can see that the hackle is now starting to parachute out. And I'm going to just wiggle it and put another turn underneath, bring it around, wiggle it, put another turn underneath. And I'm going to keep doing that until I've reached the thorax area. So that's about six or seven turns. And I'm going to add another one for luck, just there. And I'm going to hold my hackle tight. And... I'm now going to take my tying thread and I'm going to wiggle my tying thread so it doesn't trap down any of the hackle fibers. And I'm just going to lock in the hackle with two turns and then come back underneath it and lock in for a final turn. And then I can come in with my scissors, open up the V point, place it on the stem of the hackle. And if your scissors are sharp enough, you should just be able to push without cutting and it should just ping off. 
Okay, so at this point, we're almost done. Now, we're not going to return it upright because what I want to do is I want to whip finish. And I'm going to whip, I prefer to whip finish around the uh, around the hackle and the post. So it's very straightforward, or tends to be. I'm going to make a nice big wide loop. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to go one, two, three. And this is the point where the post gets in the way. So I'll just pull that out of the way. Make sure I haven't got that trapped in. There we go. And then I'm going to pull down and up. And just make sure that is nice and secure. And then I'm going to come in with my scalpel blade. And just trim that off. And if I return my fly to the upright position. There we go. I'm just going to reposition the camera slightly because there we go. Not the easiest thing to do when you're freestyling. Okay, so we've got just focus heavily on the fly. There we go. So we've got this nice long um, post sticking out the top. Now what I like to do then is I like to half the post and I pull down like so just to bed down the hackle. There we go. Make sure it's pushed down, tamped it down. Now post, I tend to leave them slightly longer until I'm out on the water and then I can um, trim them as I go along. Um, but as a rule of thumb, I tend to bring bring it back and I'm going to cut it so that it's sort of the the length of the thorax and just a little bit. So it's about there. And then I'm going to come in. I'm just going to cut it at an angle. And trim off. Get rid of that bit. It's just sticking out. And there we have almost the finished clink hammer. I'm going to take my, uh, my homemade dubbing brush. And I'm just going to come in. Just give it a little bit of a, a tease out at the bottom to get some leggy silhouette coming out. Give it a tease. You don't want them too long. You want it to be sitting in the water. And there we have it. We got a nice basic, um, uh, simple clink hammer, or relatively simple clink hammer. Very few materials in it. You could substitute in um, a different dubbing for the bod on the body. You could put in a uh, Mirage Tinsel um, uh, uh, um, rib on it if you like. Um, you could put a little shuck in as well, a couple of a couple of strands of Antron or, um, or some other other crinkle material at the end, um, because you're, we're imitating an emerging emerging insect here. Um, and uh, had some great fun with these on the on the River Itchin you know, over the last couple of seasons, particularly um, particularly in uh, heavy riffles in in sort of very skinny water, um, and watching trout on ranunculus beds. And the, these little wildies, they're just coming, um, they're just coming around, and they make a complete mockery of drag free drift because they only want to take it when it's being dragged around as it's coming down towards you. So. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's an absolutely amazing thing to watch, and uh, you just, it almost as if uh, time slows down as you're watching it. Okay, so um, that's our, that's my, um, my take on a, on a very simple clink hammer. Um, they can be more complicated. Um, you can, um, you can obviously buy the original clink hammer hooks. Um, Partridge do a very nice clink hammer hook that's got a much longer, um, uh, it's a much longer um, hook. Um, I tend to use those though for for tying a stimulator. I do like them for a stimulator, um, but the Fasner hook. There we have it. Nice little clean camera. It's going to sit in the water and be cocked up like this. And there it is. It's got to be a mouthful for any trout. Give it a go. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, 
can tell it's been a tiring week this week. I've been back into work and uh, the kids in school have been, uh, been a bit mental. Um, so, um, Phil says you're advertising all of his clothing. Yeah, I'm, I just threw this on because I was, I was, uh, I was a bit cold earlier on. Um, yeah, Andrew Struffy Derby. Yeah, it's a game changer. Right. Okay. So, if you've got any questions, don't forget to throw them up. Um, do apologise for the. I'm trying to reduce down the. The angle there. Right then. So for the sec for our second fly. Tonight we're going to go. Um, we're going to go a merger, um, sort of a parachute a merger. Um, if I can actually find there they are. I can actually find my hooks um, and for this I'm going to use a, um, a size 12 barbless um, uh, dry fly hook sprite hook um, it's got a really nice long shank on it um, which is really essential for some of these flies um, so I'm going to take one of these put it in the vise you'll be able to see what I mean So Phil said, uh, do you use a dropper from the Bend, New Zealand style, which seems to be called a duo now? Um, I haven't down here on the basis that on the on the itching um, and uh, and the rivers that I'm fishing, um, we're not allowed. Um, and most of the still waters, it's single fly only. But um, I, at some point I am going to and tie it with that dropper in with the dropper loop at the bottom, either either with a tippet ring or a piece of heavy duty uh, uh, mono um, in there. So. It'd be really quite cool. Um, it can be a pretty effective um, uh, combination. Okay, right. So, this week it keeps going in and out of focus. Just get that in. Might be my top, actually doesn't confuses the camera right I'm just gonna have a drink of wine okay so for the next one a little bit of inspiration from James Wayne um, I don't know if you're on James um, this evening but a little bit of inspiration from James Wayne from uh, a fly he posted earlier on today that was an exquisite looking um, CDC uh, Dunn olive Dunn pattern um, so I'm going to tie a very similar pattern, but this time with a with a with a parachute post on it, and the process is virtually exactly the same as the clink hammer. Except this time, we're going to put in a tail, um, and uh, I'm going to put in a, uh, um, a a dubbed body as well. So for this, um, I'm going to um, <laughs> for this I'm going to use uh, use an olive equivalent of the uh, Semperfly um, wax thread, twelve volt. Um, and I'm going to start off in exactly the same way, close up to the eye. I'm not going to leave much space on this one. And I'm going to bring my thread about 15, 20 turns, not quite down to the uh, down to the to the hook point, but quite close to it. And then I'm going to take it back up to the centre of that, just behind. And then I can remove remove my waist there. Um, and this time again, I'm going to use the polyon, semperfly polyon. Again, I've I've uh, I've halved it. If I was tying smaller flies, um, I'd half this again. Um, and you've got to be careful with the post. I find this you've got to be careful with the post. If you leave the post too high, it acts like a sail, and often it will topple your fly over, um, uh, or it will catch it, and it, it just won't go in the direction you want it to. So the, the length of that post is really important. Um, so I'm going to bring it under. I'm going to lay it on top. And we're just going to go through exactly the same process as we did with the clink hammer. Um, and if it doesn't look right and doesn't go right first time, just take it off and start again. So three turns in just to secure it. I'm going to hold up my post. I'm going to put a couple of turns either side I do like tying these as well there's something about um, parachute posts and if I'm making lots of them 
I um, tie up all the parachute posts first. All the all the hooks with posts. And then I might have 10 or 15 of them lined up. And then I'll just tie in the tails of the bodies and the thorax and the hackle. Um, saves a lot of time. So I'm going to take it up exactly the same. Not pulling too tight. Because if I pull too tight, it all just flips off the end. I'm going to take it up. Give it a little pull every now and then just to tighten it all the way up and I'm going to work all my way back down securing it in giving it some structure till I get right down to the bottom make sure it's in the right position for me and then I'm just going to build up either side don't be shy on this bit because actually it reduces the amount of thorax that you need to put in Okay, and then I'm going to take my tying thread, touch in turns where I can, a nice underbody that's flat. I'm going to take it down to approximately on this fly, um, just between the hook point and where a barb might be. Okay, I don't want it to be right down to where the barb is, I want it to be halfway between the point here. And where the barb might be, which would be down just hidden inside here. Um, I'm going to put a tail in. I'm going to come in with my um, my trusty uh, Cock de Leon. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a nice Cock de Leon feather. Um, this comes from another whiting pack, a tailing pack. And again, if you're using a lot of Cock de Leon, it's worth uh, buying the best quality that you can in different, uh, different colours. Okay, um, this is quite a dark pardo, as they call it. I'm just going to take off the fluffy bits at the end, just makes it easier to hold. Um, and we've got these beautiful speckled barred um, uh, barbules on this particular one. Um, and I'm going to find a section that I want to use. I'm not going to use many because um, we want to imitate as much as we can the, uh, the actual insect itself. So maybe I've got five or six and I'm just going to get all of the points so that they're all lined up. I can take those in my thumb and forefinger and just give them a pull and off they come. So we're left with we're left with some nice points here. Okay. Now you could use less, you could use more. There are lots of debates about tails on on uh, on on flies, I know, on dry flies. Um, I do like them in the fact that they, if you get it right, it tends to cock the fly up and makes that profile in the water. So when that, that fish is looking up in the viewing window, you know, and it's getting the profile of the fly. Um, I think that's all important personally. Um, so to tie this on, I'm going to going to adjust the length in a second, but I'm just going to put it to the side of the hook and I'm going to tie it onto the bare hook, not onto the tying thread. And as I do that, it draws... It draws the Cock de Leon fibres onto the top of the hook. And I'm just going to pull them back until I get the length that I want. Quite like a longer tail. Um, those people that fish with me know that I like a long tail on a fly. Um, so I'm just going to just going to make it a little bit longer than, than, I, than possibly other people would. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the tail ever slightly without any pressure. I'm just going to take my... Take my tying thread just underneath it and then pull it up and it will cock my tail fibres up. There you go. Cocks my tail fibres up. And at this point, if you wish to, you could splay them out a little bit. And then I'm going to take my tying thread up and just tie in like this. And I'm going to use this end bit um, to actually give some bulk to my thorax. Don't want to waste it. Don't want to use, unnecessarily cut things and make steps in the fly. When we come to the front, just going to take these little sections off. Take it up. I'm going to take my tying thread back. And all the way back down to my tail. So we're starting now to develop... Um, Something that looks a little bit more like a fly. 
okay um so um it's up to you again now you put a dubbed body in you could put in a floss body you could you know do whatever you liked um i'm going to go back to uh back to my scruffy dubbing um so this uh this uh, appleby olive which is a really nice color that i like um and exactly like james's pattern earlier so we're keeping it simple I'm not going to put a rib on. I don't want any undue weight on this at all. Um, but I, what I do want is a tapered body. So I want it slimmer at the tail end and thicker towards the thorax end. So I'm going to take some time just to position my dubbing noodle. And I'm going to take a turn at the base. Make sure it's in the position I want it to be. Give it a turn. And then two turns up. Give it a turn. Now I'm going to go back over that last turn just to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger. And I'm going to take this up, and I'm going to start to come back down again. You can hopefully see that we're starting to taper in the body. And I'm going to add some more dubbing. If you find that your dubbing isn't sticking, you could use a little bit of wax. I find that this stuff just dubs beautifully, makes a beautiful little noodle. Um, sometimes as well, I just lick my finger and thumb and just give it a little, a little twist. Move it up. I find if I use too much wax, the wax, strangely, just causes it to stick too much. Um, so at this point now, I'm going to take it right into the base of the post. And I'm just going to come back and build my taper so we're back in to the base of the post okay there we go so we've got this nice strong constantly on ta tail they don't break off like other materials i think is that what uh yeah they last longer yeah um kieran's just said that they they last uh, much much longer but we've now got this tapered body coming in through here um and at this point I can remember what I did with it. There it is. I'm going to come back in, and this time I'm going to use my grizzle hackle again. Um, I tend to use grizzle hackles on lots of stuff, but I don't think the fish care, to be honest. Um, and uh, so I'm going to do exactly the same process as I did before to strengthen up my post. So I'm going to take about six or seven millimeters of of hackle. I'm going to find a straight pair of scissors. I'm going to cut a comb to the bottom section for added security natural curve towards me and I'm just going to secure it in check that I can get it so that it goes up my post one two Three, four, oh, just in the way, five, six, seven, work my way down, and then securing the stalk at the front, again making another taper just at that point, and then come back round. So there we have our hackle in and we've got our parachute post. Okay. Um, so now it's building up the thorax area in the front of the front of uh, our fly. Again, you can use exactly the same, um, the same material could go for a slightly different color, darker color. Um, it's up to you. I'm going to just going to stick with the same cause that's what I've got out. Um, so I'm going to form another dubbing noodle. And at this point, move it up don't re not really too bothered about it being a tight noodle at this point i'm just going to bring it in behind so make sure i've got it all covered i'm going to build up my thorax in a figure of eight wraps and at the same time making sure it's really important to see yeah on your side i can see that there's a gap so I need a bit more a 
20 in. Hopefully cover cover that up. There we go. We've covered that up. And then we're up to the front. And the front bit is the, I suppose, for me, is the most challenging bit because I want to take my dubbing down to the eye, but also bring it back up without putting a massive amount of volume into it. So I'm going to take it down. I'm going to bring it back and finish with the thread on my side. So it looks a bit scruffy. That's great because we're going to we're going to play on that. We're going to dig out some of those pieces and get some legs going on this. So far, we've got our nice long tail. We've got our body, and we've got our our hackle to go in now. Now you can reposition it at this point, same as we did before. So I'm just going to reposition it in my vise, so it's pointing down. If you wanted to put a half hitch on here as well, you could just to just to just to give you peace of mind. But again, I'm going to just going to come round, and I want to put quite a few six or seven turns. So that's one, two. Three, four, five. Just got a little bit of the of the post stuck in it. Six. One for luck, because I can. And I'm going to take my thread, wiggle it back and forth, so I'm not trapping any of the barbules. And then back around twice. And then once more for luck. And then I'm going to come in. And I'm going to use my sharp scissors. And I'm just going to push like that. And that's put, oh, put that to one side because that's going to service a, a good few other flies. And now, all I need now is to whip finish. You'll notice I'm not putting any varnish on these. Um, two reasons. Number one, it's excess weight excess mass um, secondly um, the you know I want these to last quite a few fish but if they, if I can take two or three fish on on each fly great after that you know they tend to get pretty mullered um, so they hit them really hard so you know if you can take a few fish that's great if they only last one fish I have a bit of a problem personally with my own flies so I'm going to put in two three just remove that post my whip finish bed it down I'm going to come in with my scalpel blade just push the thread against the scalpel blade to get it to cut it there we go so it's nice and clean reposition my fly in the vise and again I'm just going to pull down and just bed down those turns and now how long do I want this well, let's go a body length and I'm going to come in at an angle and just give it a little trim so we end up with this really pretty hackle here you can see the difference that a, a genetic hackle makes they're springy they're tough um, uh, I'm using a saddle they're less, um, they're, they're softer than a cape, um, a traditional cape, um, off the back of the neck. Um, but this, the, the, you know, these saddles are, are, are quite stunning. Um, and they float for ages, absolutely float for ages with a, a bit of an application um, of your favorite floatant, some dust, you know, whatever it is you're going to use. It's absolutely stunning. And I've cut this down so that it's going to act less as a sail and just as that sighter. Um, you could cut it down even further. Um, it's absolutely fine. And I'm going to come in as the final act, and I'm just going to agitate out these fibres. Until I'm happy. So I'm just going to pull them down, like so. I'm not just going to leave them like that, because I'm going to come in at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to give them a little 
little haircut. I don't want them too long. And that, very nice little parachute. You just apply the same methods to, to any other parachute fly that you want to tie. You'd be a, a parachute Adams or whatever. Um, you know, effectively, you know, effectively, we're just tying a dry fly, but putting the hackle in a slightly different position. Um, I've even seen them tied, and I have never done it. I've even seen, seen them tied with double posts and double hackles so that they interlink between each other as a showpiece. And I always thought I might try that, but I might try that um, over Christmas and see how that goes. Um, so it's a lovely little fly. Um, the other cool bit, great thing about um, the scruffy dubbing is that it, it, it floats a lot, floats particularly well. Um, there are lots of others that I find just absorb too much water. The other one that I like is Nature's Spirit uh, Snowshoe Hair. Um, seems to have some really good hydrophobic qualities to it um, and it's worth getting hold of. And I know that, well, at least they were having it. Somebody was having a Nature's Spirit sale. Somebody remind me. Don't know. Somebody will put it up. Kieran knows because we talked about it. Um, the Nature Spirit sale. Um, and, and it's worth 20% you know, off. So it's worth uh, stocking up on some good Nature Spirit materials. Um, so, you know, in terms of in terms of our parachute flies, um, that's all you've got to do. <laughs> and I say all you've got to do, but it's all about practice and having the right materials and the best hackles that you can. Um, so feel free to uh, to throw in uh, any questions um so i know that you're all concentrating again um so uh rodri let's just get back up uh rodri hi rodri rodri williams just started tying flies problem have having is um oh, it's just jumped uh have is trying to whip finish okay well we can we can sort of tackle that one if you don't mind guys um just got a spare hook here um there we go so in terms of um in terms of whip finishing okay it depends on which tool you've got um there are the evolution of the whip finish tool you know the there there's three main types um but the one i particularly like is uh and lots of people like is 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 this shape here which is the mattarelli um style um and uh, and it's just the simplest one for me, and I just find that um, using it, it's quite quite uh, quite straightforward. So, Rodri, when you when you're with finishing, I'll just put on some thread to start us off. And the best thing to do um, when you're with finishing is, and you want to get used to using the tool, is do like, is do like I'm doing here, and just put some um, thread onto a hook and just practice. So what I do with my whip finish, is, uh, whip finishing tool is uh, on the matter you've got this little um, bump here. Now I place that down, so it's pushing down on my tying thread, and then I lay it flat onto the tying thread, and then I catch at the top end with the hook in like that. Oh, it will come off. It's easier to do it fast. Look in like that and then you just spin it so you're forming a triangle okay so you're forming a triangle and then it sits on your on your hook and and it can move in and out it can move in and out and then it's a case of just using the rotational ability of the whip finish tool just to spin it around the hook and then come up push down and it's like a spring, so it will just, you can give it a bit of a welly, and it'll come out, and you're left with it on the hook, and then you just give it a pull, like so, like that. Now, some of them have got a little cutting blade on here as well. I don't, but you can then cut it as well. Um, I like to come in with a, with a scalpel and just do it like that. Um... I was taught how to do it by hand. It's actually not that difficult. It wasn't allowed to use um, a whip finish tool. In fact, they weren't even allowed in the clubhouse at the time. Um, if you had one, you sort of had to leave really quickly. Um, so um, it's a similar process. Just put fingers 
just on the top, form a triangle like this. On, turn, down, turn, down, turn, down. You almost break dancing with your fingers. Holding the loop down the bottom. Come in with a with something tough. Draw it up. In it goes. Whip finish done. So give it a go, Rodri. Just try it on a on an old hook. Um, give it a really, you know, just just keep practicing it, and it'll start to become second nature. That's my advice to you on that. Um, so uh, um, let's have a look at what else we've got. Yeah, that's right, Kieran. Funky fly tying. Um, the guys at Funky, yeah, they've got some good sales on. Don't know if it's still on. It's worth having a look. Um, uh, hi, Dan. Nice to see you. Um, and Gareth says, if you were to suggest what Mets cock hackle to get first, what would it be? Neck or saddle and what colour? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 I do like a saddle hackle. Um mainly because um, if I just hold this out in the background, I don't know if you can see that, look how long they are, and they're all very uniform. Um, I, I, there's all sorts of people, you have your, your Mets fans, your Whitings fans. The thing we have these days is we can't really get out and, and look at them and take them out of the packet and feel them like you could if you could go to, uh, go to uh, the stores in years gone by. Um, but... Uh, I do like a saddle. Um, I think that a grizzle, a nice grizzle, is pretty ubiquitous. You can use it for most patterns. Um, but if you're going to start um, collecting them, you want you want a, you want a nice grizzle. You want a, a brown, um, uh, uh, possibly a cockabundi if you can get it. Uh, a badger wouldn't go uh, go amiss. A nice olive. Um, you know, those are the sorts of colours. Okay. Um, I'll put another answer on there as well later on, um, if that's okay, Gareth, and I'll add, I'll add some stuff to it while I've had a little bit of a chance to think a bit more about it. Um, th one of the best things to do about hackles is actually don't just buy them from the website. Um, so go on to Funky, go on to whoever's selling them, um, give them a call. They're more than happy to have a chat about these things um, and, to, and to suggest what they've got and also give you sort of viewpoint. And they like to do that whole personal service. Um, I found that John at Funky, as I said right at the beginning, he sent me down quite a few saddles and just said, look, select the ones you want. We'll charge you for those. Send the rest back. Um, and, and that's what happens when you build relationships with uh, with, with these guys. Um, so, um, oh, thanks, Chris. 20% off until 6th of the 12th. So we've got, yeah, until, what's that, until Sunday. Um, so that'd be cool. Um, so, Bob, Cherry, uh, could you suggest a good vice that won't break the bank? Oh, I'm not the man to ask because um, I'm a bit of a, 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 a vice geek. Um, so, but um, effectively, vices are just there to hold the hook. Um, so you can't go wrong with um, with Renzetti's. You can't go wrong with anvil vices. Um, um, uh, you know, if you're going to start off and you and you're just starting your fly tying journey, don't go silly. Um, you want something that's going to do the job, that's got a bit of rotation in it, if possible. That what you're after is good jaws, um, something that is going to take a minimum amount of um, adjustment to actually secure in your hook, um, and it's going to keep it rock solid. If you find that when you put it in, you've got to keep adjusting it and it's dropping out. You know, to me, that's not the sign of good engineering. Um, you need, you want, you want something that's going to, um, going to allow you to, um, to try different things and to do inspect your hook from different angles if you can. But I still tie on a very stationary one, an old one occasionally when I've got multiple things going on. It certainly does the job. Um, does it affect my tying? Does this one improve my tying? I think yes, it does. Um, but you know, it's uh, my tying's uh, um, you know been tying for a long, long time now. Um, but don't go, don't go overboard. Um, 
There are lots and lots and lots of vices out there. Um, be careful buying second hand. Ask lots of questions about the jaws and about usage. Um, perhaps uh, lots of pictures of the jaws quite close up. Um, you don't want to see any notches in them. You don't want to see anything that, that, that where they're not meeting, um, you know, because that would be immediately be a, a red flag to me. Um, but uh, I am writing at the moment uh, a brief guide to fly fish to fly tying in terms of vices and, and bobbin holders and things with links and stuff. So that'll be coming out fairly soon as well. Um, probably over Christmas when I've had some time to sit um, and, and, uh, and, and write it. Um, OK, I hope um, well, that um, answers that question. Um, so um, <laughs> going back to tonight. So we've tied. For those of you that might have just joined us, we've tied um, a clink hammer. OK, so there's our there's our clink. Get that out. Just move those. Remind me not to wear this jumper again. It's not liking this jumper. To wear a plain T-shirt, I think. So we've got a, our clink hammer. OK, our simple, basic clink hammer. Just make that a bit, a bit taller. So you can see the whole thing. This is where it all goes pear shaped. That's better. Not liking the focus now. I'll take some photos anyway. For some reason I can't get it to focus in particularly well on the clink hammer now. Well, there we go. Oh, I moved. There we go. It's now focused. So there we go. There's our clink hammer. And then we also tied simple olive parachute these are all size 12s fairly large for today um, but do go down um, as i said to 16s and 18s when when it when it dictates um, and uh, um, they're really fun to tie so give them a go uh, yep kieran bruising yeah bruising on the jaws and it's a, it's an absolute pain so being able to uh to get replacement jaws is a big thing as well. Um, and, uh, and well, I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Um, as we're moving through the step by steps, uh, are hitting, um, the, the file section up in the, uh, up in the top tabs, but also, um, on the, uh, on my YouTube channel, Lost Lake Fly Tying, um, you'll find lots of videos that are starting to go up. Um, the of things that we're tying here plus loads of others as, uh, as I develop those as they come along have a look if you like what you see subscribe um, share like do all that sort of stuff um, because it gives me uh, lots of impetus to to keep going um, they're not always going to be perfect but they're my types of ties so um, I hope you get something out of this and I hope that um, uh, I hope that you've uh, had a good evening and a good and a good uh, um, hour of just having a look and seeing how some of these are actually tied and being able to ask questions uh and there we go so i'm going to leave it at that um i always have a bit of a problem finishing these because i can never see the finish button but here's to your good health um whether or not we do one next week i'm not sure yet got to decide um it's coming up to the christmas period got loads of stuff on um but uh um if not um, this definitely won't be the last um, but here's to Scott wherever he may now be resting and uh, rest of you have a good one and if you're fishing tomorrow or Sunday have a good one post up on the uh, on the Facebook page with your catches let's have a look and see what you've all been getting up to um, thanks a lot guys take care